Corduba, the capital of Beatica since the 2nd century BC, was during the Roman occupation the nerve center of Espanol Tirior, and together with Italica and Cartea, was one of the three oldest Roman settlements in Beatica. Corduba was the center of the military command and civil service, and has throughout its history produced remarkable scholars, thinkers, and politicians. Following the Roman Beatica route from Kabula, today, Almodova del Rio, we get to Cordoba via the C431 in just 20 minutes. The Romans would have taken almost a day to complete this 15 mile or 22 kilometer journey. Aproximadamente 22 kilómetros, lo que se correspondía con casi una jornada de camino. Distances were marked on the road by milestones, many of which can still be seen today in Córdoba. De este tipo de señalizaciones de piedra en Córdoba. Near to the city there were two mansions which lay alongside the Via Augusta and offered travelers accommodation and warm meals. Some 10 miles from Córdoba, on the road from Córdoba to Epora, modern-day Montoro, was Ad Decumo, situated near to the Puente Mocho Bridge. In the other direction, 24 miles away, lay Ad Ares in present-day La Calota. The city's strategic location played a critical role in its historical development. Córdoba has always been at the crossroads of routes and, more importantly, of cultures. During the third millennium BC, Córdoba was already a stable settlement which was located to the west of what would later become the Roman city. Thanks to its natural and mining resources, thriving agriculture and trade, during the first half of the 2nd century BC, Córdoba became an enclave for Roman troops. In his writings, geographer Strabo refers to Córdoba as a place which was founded by Marcelo, who, according to researchers, was three times consul Marcus Claudius Marcelo. Strabo places this event as being between the years 169 and 152 BC, coinciding with his journeys to Hispania. Corduba, a foundation of Marcelo, dominates a large stretch of Betis and stands out for the fecundity and vastness of its territory. It was inhabited since its beginnings by a select group of Romans and indigenous people. These two groups coexisted peacefully for several decades, and it is even said that there was collaboration between them. This would explain Córdoba's future prosperity, a legacy of pre-Roman Córdoba, whose name the city has retained. However, it was not until the civil wars waged by Julius Caesar and Pompey's son that Roman Córdoba was to play a role of great historic significance. The city supported Pompey's followers, but Caesar's forces eventually won at the legendary Battle of Munda. After this, his followers, known as Popularis, besieged the city and destroyed it as a punishment. A turning point in the history of Córdoba occurred somewhat later when the city won the favours of Emperor Augustus, who granted it to the status of colony, raising its rank to that of patrician. During this period, the Colinae Patricia Córdoba expanded its urban centre almost to the banks of the river Guadalquivir and saw a rapid growth in the construction of monumental buildings. They all wish to live in blessing, but they are totally blind about what makes life a blessing. 
philosopher Lucius Aneo Seneca, who was born in Cordoba around the 4th century AD, traveled to Rome to receive training in the arts of rhetoric, but he soon showed his inclination towards philosophy and embraced the Stoical doctrine. He was a tutor to Nero and exerted a considerable influence on the emperor until the year 64. When, uninspired by the lack of political freedom and social justice in the court and the Senate, he retired from public life. In the year 65, Nero forced him to commit suicide, an order that Seneca accepted as an action deriving from the philosophical views he had cultivated during his life. A similar fate was suffered by his nephew Lucan, a poet born in Cordoba who was initially feted by the emperor and whose subsequent fall into disgrace led to his fatal misfortune. No other thing deserves more care than to avoid following, like sheep, the footprints of those which are in front, unaware of where one is going or the route being followed. The cult of the imperial family developed rapidly in Cordoba. Near to the eastern gate of the city, which dominates the entrance to the Via Augusta, a monumental complex was built in the first century AD. It includes a temple, a porticoed square and a circus. The latter was parallel to the Via Augusta, which entered the city through a long-lost gate once situated in Cae Alfonso Trece. Opposite the temple, currently on the site occupied by the Palace of Orive, stood the monumental Roman circus, where chariot races were held. The temple, of which several columns and capitals are still visible next to the town hall, had been built over the old city wall. Following the Roman Beatica route from Almodova del Rio, traveller enters the city through the western gate, which is today known as the Puerta de Gallegos. After passing the necropolis, of which part of the road flanked by two circular striking mausoleums still remain. This gate provided access to the Maximum Decumanus, a straight road leading to the colonial forum which was reformed at the beginning of the first century, in imitation of Rome's Forum Augusti. It was here that it joined the Via Augusta which followed the Cardo Maximum southwards. On this section stood the theatre, vestiges of which can be seen in the archaeological museum. The fact that the southern gate was next to the river Guadalquivir meant that it was necessary to build a bridge with stone arches, take the main road which nowadays links with the N4 or E5 in the direction of Seville and Cadiz. Con dirección Cádiz por Sevilla. Cordoba became a cosmopolitan city, as befitted its status as the administrative, economic and political capital of the Conventus Cordubensis and the Beatica province, and it soon turned into an imitation of Rome itself. Strabo wrote, those who live near to Betis have assimilated the Roman way of life and don't even remember their own language. So there is little else they need in order to become Romans. Corduba was the centre from where official mail was dispatched to other urban areas and the headquarters of the administrative archives. After the establishment of the Republic, Rome saw the need to organize itself in order to encourage its own development. The populus Romanos gathered in assemblies or comitia, where the magistrates charged with ruling the country were elected every year. According to their roles, the members of the comitia were divided into questors for financial matters, councillors for administration, 
and praetors for the carrying out of justice. At the top of the hierarchy were two consuls, who assumed the executive power, commanded the army and performed the duties of heads of state. The Senate was composed of old magistrates who controlled internal policies and were in charge of foreign affairs. During the Republic, a dictator sat above them, and from the first century onwards, an emperor. The image of Cordoba as a prosperous city remained unchanged until the end of the third century. It was then that Emperor Maximian Herculeus ordered the construction of the Palatium Maximiliani, one of the most outstanding buildings in the whole history of Cordoba, which employed new architectural techniques in the service of imperial power. These are the remains of the Maximiano Herculeo Imperial Palace, emperor at the end of the 3rd century and the beginning of the 4th century, in the palace which may have been located at one of the most western locations of the Roman Empire. The importance of the building is the fact that it is an imperial palace, that it is located in Cordoba because it has a unique floor plan and architectonic design and because it was evidently the only imperial palace in the Iberian Peninsula. It is an 8 hectare, 80,000 square meters building with a length of more than half a kilometer and which currently, although shares the area with the railway station, the preserved area is one of the largest urban sites in Spain. An important section of the building can be seen, which, as excavations continue, allows understanding what is meant by Cordoba and for their tetrarchy and for the history of the Roman Empire. Sobre todo a medida que continúen las excavaciones permitirá entender perfectamente lo que supuso este edificio tanto para Córdoba como para la propia tetrarquía como para la historia de, del Imperio Romano. Nevertheless, this period saw the beginning of the empire's decline, and a state of chaos became more generalized. Christianity started to spread. Bishop Osio was the most prominent figure of the new religion in Cordoba. He was an advisor to Constantine I the Great, the first Christian emperor. Christian communities began to gain increasing importance in the city, and this can be seen in the Paleo-Christian sarcophagus brought from Rome, which is today kept in the archaeological museum. There is also another sarcophagus in the Alcazar, although this one has pagan origins. One of the most valuable pieces on display in the archaeological museum is the Crouching Aphrodite, a marble statue unearthed during excavation works carried out in Calle Amparo. Experts also highlight the importance of a thoracata, which is in a magnificent state of preservation and is part of a privately owned collection. In the 8th century, Abd al-Rahman I turned Cordoba into the capital of al-Andalus, and it was under his rule that the construction of the mosque was started. After the proclamation of the independent emirate, the city underwent a process of massive urban development, with Cordoba reaching its heyday in the 10th century, when it became the most prosperous and cultivated city in the Western world. The city of the three cultures, Christian, Muslim and Jewish, encouraged the development of literature, music, art and all types of intellectual and scientific activities. Also from this period are Madinat al-Zara, a palatial city which reflects the former power and glory of the Umayyad Caliphs, and its analogous Madinat al-Zira, which was placed under the service of the Amirian usurpers. In 1236, Fernando III the Saint conquered the city and from then on Christianity prevailed.
At the end of the 15th century, the Catholic monarchs received Columbus in the Reales Alcazares. It was there that Queen Elizabeth became interested in his plans to make a voyage to reach the Indies by sailing towards the west and granted him royal money to fund the project. Columbus discovered America on the 12th of October 1492. In the middle of the 16th century, Cordoba enjoyed another period of artistic and cultural glory. Although the city continued to remain deeply attached to its beliefs and traditions. Cordoba's latter-day revival came during the middle of the 19th century, coinciding with the process for the expropriation of church assets and the arrival of the railway which led to a gradual improvement in the local economy and a growth in population. In 1994, the historic center of the city was declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. Today, Cordoba is a vibrant and enterprising city, which is a leading candidate to be designated Europe's cultural capital in 2016. It is situated in the geographical centre of Andalusia, with excellent road links. The high-speed train, AVE, is the fastest and most comfortable way of travelling to Cordoba from Madrid. It links the capital with Seville and will very soon also go to Malaga. The city is surrounded by beautiful natural scenery and pathways lined by exuberant and almost unspoiled countryside. Situated at the foot of the Sierra Morena, a mountainous range which flanks the north of the city, Córdoba is crossed by the river Guadalquivir, whilst to the south it borders with the Campiña. Its convenient geographical location means that the staple of Cordoba's gastronomy includes fine quality meats as well as cured pork products and cheeses from the Valley of Los Pedroches, olive oil from the Baena and Puente Genil area, and wines with the Montilla Moriles denomination of origin. Its typical and unique cuisine bears the imprint of the rich cultural legacy of the civilizations which settled there in the past. The most popular dishes include salmorejo and flamenquin, and cakes and pastries such as the pastel cordobes and angel hair puff pastry. Cordoba is one of the most important centers for craft work and jewelry in Spain. The traditional artistic work of silver and metal craftsmen has been passed down the generations since the 16th century. Filigree, together with leatherwork, are the most important traditional crafts in the city. In May, the whole city is taken over by fiestas. These include the May crosses, when all the barrios are decorated with flower crosses, the famous competition of the patios, when the beautiful small garden courtyards are open to the public, and the feria dedicated to Nuestra Señora de la Salud all attract thousands of people every year. There is also a high-profile guitar festival, which includes a comprehensive program of events and is held throughout July. Cordoba, the Roman Corduba, which was also to become both Moorish and Jewish, a melting pot of cultures, a place of remarkable personalities, a world heritage site, is today, above all, an open and friendly city, a stopping point on the Roman Beatica route which will captivate and enthrall the visitor.